an ESP32 P4 board with support for both power over ethernet and LTE and similar M2 cards. This is exactly what wireless tag is now offering based on one of the modules. And in the following steps, I'm going to look at the product a little bit and we're gonna see what they did. Here we have our delivery box. And yes, today I'm being lazy. So I'll just cut into it from the bottom. <laughs> and here we have the evaluation board. Along with some additional modules. We see the actual board, which is an P4 based PCB. As we see it here, it's about the size of a Raspberry Pi or similar. And it has the P4 module, which we know from the past. And here we've got some extra packaging material. Let's take it out. And we see this is it. And another close up of the P4 as you can see it here. And when we look at the front, here we get the power in and the UART for programming. Here we've got the USB plugs for periphery. This is once again the P4 module with its pins, the usual two command and control buttons. And then here we've got MIPI interfaces for a camera and for a display in case we need them. One thing which I find impressive also is here, if you look carefully, you see that they've put next to each of the signals a little label telling you what it is. And this makes doing some quick experiments with the board just so much easier. And what makes this board unique are these two expansions here. And here we see also the pin out, if I'm zooming in a little. We see that it says here, five volts, five volts. And here we've got some corresponding pins. And so what you can do is you can add power over ethernet by plugging this here in like so, and then you have a two layer board like this, like you see here. Or alternatively, you've got one like this with a barrel power connector, which then also converts the power for the board here. And yes, you need to be careful that these really fit exactly here on the side five and here on the side five, that there is no misalignment because otherwise when you power the board on, there might be some fireworks. This is a really communication focused board. Here at the bottom, we see a PCIe slot for PCIe cards, including the mounting holes here. And here in the back, we even have what looks to me like a little SIM card holder. So, these usually belong together. And yes, if you want to create a smart IoT board using a modem card, using the P4, this is what makes it possible and or easy. And now I've got it plugged in and I push the button on the power bank and we see not much happens because this is a baseboard, there is no LED or anything. Or is it? You see, oh ho, now something lit up. Because here, there is a complete power switch. And you need to be careful. If this is on, the board works. And if this is off, it appears completely dead. So if you have trouble, make sure it is like so. 
And then, as you see here close up, this LED will light up and will show that power is coming. I have to ask you for a favor. Please subscribe and activate the ring ding 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 because it just helps so much with the algorithm. And I really want this channel to grow so I can get you more content. Thank you so much, my friends. And now, as a first test, we connect the board and then we run sudo demesk. And we see here that the board automatically connects itself to the TTY ACM0 because the bootloader on the board automatically opens this logging output. And in the next step, we create ourselves a new working folder and push this command to download ASPIDF in version 5.5 .5 because this is basically the first version which provides a usable support for the ASP32P4 and uh, if you already want to play with the board you definitely need it anyways. And of course you don't need to do it on the command line, you can also use an IDE which has IDF support if that is more to your liking. The next thing which is important is that we need to run the install command as you see here for the P4. And this is very important because otherwise we don't get the tools which we need to support the SOC found on this development board. And when we get this, we simply enter this command here and now we see that it has activated ASP IDF 5.5 .5, and this means that we can very soon use the monitor to find out more about what's actually happening on the board. The command that we really want to run is this one, but it's not possible to run the menu outside of a project because otherwise you get this. So what do we do? <coughs> now we are in a valid project. And now we say this. And we see, oops, we still don't have CMake. Hmm. And if you do get this error, in the first step, we use where is to check. And we see that there are multiple candidates of CMake. And if we enter CMake here on the command line, we see that it also starts, but then it complains. And so in the next step, we run CMake alone. And if it crashes with a no module error, then as you see here, you need to do pip install CMake. And after that, if we make CMake again, we still get this error. But IDF no longer crashes. And one thing which is important is that you don't only run the P4, but after that you also, as you see here, need to run a classic install SH for the base ASP32 package, because this provides you with a few additional modules, which otherwise lead to, lead to weird behavior. And then, we change into an example project and run the monitor command like you see here. And then we already have it connected. And if I push the reset button, you see it gives us this usual welcoming message. So the communication interface works. And after that, you are basically free to run whatever ESP32 
P4 application you want to run. And given that we have this beautiful module, of course I'm going to go inside of here and say idf.py build. This is the basic Ethernet example and we're going to see what happens. And when this is done, we go here and of course it complained because it's a P4. So we need to change the settings here a little bit. And this is done by entering this command as you see here. And now we see it's recompiling the whole project. So we need to do another build. <coughs> and then we try this command instead. And then we run this command once again and we see it's now uploading the whole code. There is no need to push any buttons. And now we once again say the monitor and we see that it's crashing all the time. And the reason for this is we see here that the Ethernet doesn't start up because there is no Ethernet module connected to the board yet. At this point, I have to thank you for watching. As always, this is a really impressive product, which can be very, very useful. And as I already mentioned, Wireless tag, we know them because they were the first distributor who did the C5 and P4 modules. So they are a very reputable operation and well, the hardware is very beautiful. And that's that. Thank you for watching. Like and comment. Bye bye.